Hi, I'm Marianne and if you're like me, then you've probably been in this situation before. You're ready to spend all your savings from the last five years for the car of your dreams, let's say. But as you scroll along the option list, you're wondering if you really need some of the features. Some of them are there just for marketing, others can save your life. Some of them are shoved into your face in some sort of special packages, you get the gist of it. The moral here, folks, is spend your money wisely. But let's dig a little deeper. The head-up display is useful only if you're a fighter pilot and the Russians are on your 6. I would never pay extra for a head-up display. I find it distracting and not helpful in real life. Some HUDs even look really cheap with retractable projection glass. Mazda or Renault have this. Other manufacturers put the head-up display in a larger tech pack which most of the time costs thousands of dollars or euros depending on where you live. On some cars, BMW puts the head-up display in the same pack with gesture control. Now don't get me started with gesture control. Another stupid gimmick that forces you to take your hands off the steering wheel and do this stupid gesture for turning down the volume. And this for pause. I mean, come on, I have buttons for that right on the freaking steering wheel. Also, am I the only one that thinks voice control is useless? Who uses it anyway? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Okay, maybe it's good if you have Stockholm Syndrome from arguing with your spouse. No one actually takes the time to read the long scroll of voice commands you need to learn in order to speak to the damn thing, so why bother paying for it? More on the list of useless expensive things, I can also add the infotainment slash navigation system. I would very much like the option to buy just the screen and to connect my phone to it. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are amazing and they are both preloaded with better navigation apps, better music, streaming apps, podcasts and audiobooks. What can you want more? Now we're moving on to the digital commands for the climate control. This would be justified only if the voice control I mentioned earlier would have worked as intended. But I also do not agree with digital vents control. Why is it even necessary? Who had this idea in the first place and who's the genius that sanctioned it as a good idea? Hmm? Next up on my list are illuminated doorsteps and light projection from the side mirrors, like this rather uncool Mustang logo. Good enough only to spot the puddle that you've parked in. Or maybe those are intended to be the headlights, because Mustangs are known for turning spontaneously sideways through crowds. I will also like to add automatic wipers to my complaints, useful only if it's not raining, otherwise they are either too slow or too fast. However, I do agree with automatic headlights. People have been proven to be idiots at times and thus are prone to errors. That's why I prefer a computer to turn on and off the headlights. Let's continue with the soft closing door mechanism. I mean, yeah, it's cool to brag about it and that suction noise is kind, kind of... I'm not gonna finish this sentence. Anyway, in reality, everyone except you will slam the door shut, so no more suction noise for you. Night vision! Good for war and that's it. Otherwise, it's just a waste of space and money. Same for adaptive suspension. Good only if you have an M5 or something ridiculously fast. Oh, and steering assistance. Why would you need something so fake to make you feel like in a race car? I can tell you firsthand that a race car doesn't feel like that. Hyundai, I'm looking at you. Because they even have this feature on the steering wheel of models like i30. Also, any car with 7 seats. If someone offers me to sit in the third row, I will take that as an insult or some sort of punishment. You'd better stab me with magnesium pedal shifter. Some car makers charge you extra for these useless things. And some even put them on cars that are running with a CVT gearbox. Why? Don't get me wrong, I do prefer pedal shifters on a fast car like a GTI or an M model, but on a Honda CRV, no, thank you. Okay, rant over, that's all for today. But I wanna hear what things you consider useless on a car. Leave your love and hate in the comment section and see you next time.